This is the first in a series of videos to show some of the new Inventor 2011 features and a little bit about how to, how to use them, uh, maybe some functionality that is not clear from the tutorials bundled with Inventor. I'm going to show a little bit in this video about iCopy. If you run through the tutorial uh, that comes with Inventor, you will see that it sort of requires a sketch in one plane uh, that's used as a skeleton to drive a model that can then be patterned down a path um, or inserted at various points. Um, and the size of that sketch is controlled by some points um, in another assembly. Now that works well for the types of assemblies that are, are sort of quite planar. Um, in, yeah, what I mean by that is that the sketch that drives them is all in one plane. The sketch that I've got here, well it's, it's actually a skeleton made up of uh, multiple sketches, has sketches in various planes but the key driving one is the sketch that's construction geometry here down the center line. I'll show you that now. You see here that there's basically a rectangle and a couple of lines that drop down uh, with other lines attached to the bottom of them. Now these lines are not fixed. They are not dimensioned movable lines. And we've created some dimensions around the outside to govern certain distances which need to remain fixed. If I go back to the skeleton now, you'll see that these green lines here representing the legs of this conveyor assembly are projected from that center line. And the whole sketch is adaptive that drives this skeleton, which means that it can be adjusted. And then I have a bed layout sketch across the top, which governs the position of the main stringers and, and cross members. I then put this sketch into an assembly. And using frame generator, created a frame over the top of it. So the sketch determines where the various members are. And the legs, the length of the legs is driven by the length of that line, which can be adjusted <coughs> and is adaptive. You'll see that I also have some parts here that are not frame generator parts. Now, those need to be in this assembly and what we've found is that if you don't place those parts inside the frame generator frame, you get some unpredictable behavior when you I copy the, the whole assembly. So rather than putting the sketch in building a frame over the top of it and then adding parts outside of that frame but still within the parent assembly, you better to put them inside the frame. We now go to what I've called the conveyor GA or general assembly which contains a, a part called floor sketch, which has a sketch in it that has two lines. Well, it's actually one straight line and a line made up of a whole lot of segments. And in this particular example, I want that top line to represent the bed of the conveyor. And the jagged line at the bottom is representing an uneven floor. As you can imagine, if we're going to put a series of these conveyor sections down on this floor, we're going to have to have legs of different lengths to keep the bed of the conveyor horizontal and flat. So I'll finish that sketch and go back, and I'm now going to 
as per iCopy rules, I'm going to place an iCopy. You'll see that when I select my conveyor segment, it brings up a dialog box that is requiring some input information. Now I'll go back to the conveyor segment section and just show you how that was created. You'll see here in the browser there's an iCopy definition. On the Manage tab there's an iCopy Author button which allows you to create this iCopy definition. Inside the dialog box for this author you choose the layout part and in this case I've, I've picked the skeleton which is that sketch down the center plane. And then you can go to the geometry tab and you can pick a various uh, various geometry from the model. So what I've done is I've picked a point at the front of the conveyor and I've called it front so that when it comes up in the dialog box later I know what I should be selecting. I've taken a line for the bed level which is going to be connected to the top line in the floor sketch. I've got another line representing the floor line for the first set of legs and a third line representing the floor line for the second set of legs. In the parameters tab I've got a parameter for the bed width which means that every time I place an eye copy I can adjust the width of the bed live. There's also a tab there for documents now what this allows you to do is attach some drawing files or other relevant documents, perhaps Excel spreadsheets, that are specifically for this conveyor or whatever your assembly may be. Now any assembly drawings and component drawings for that conveyor that will change depending on where you insert a segment and how high the floor is or what angle it's on. Obviously you don't want to have to every time you place one of these assemblies have to recreate all of the drawings because they're very similar there'll just be some variations in length etc. So what this allows you to do is add these drawings in here and iCopy will not only copy all the parts and rename them but it'll also copy the drawings and update them to suit the parts in each instance of the conveyor very very useful tool. Right, I'll go out of that and go back to the GA.